Hey guys, and welcome to Supernatural Secrets, an official Queensland Archives podcast. I'm your spooky host, Melody, and today I've invited my cousin, Anissa, say hey. Hello. What's the matter with you? It's a spooky podcast. Well, I already regret this. So this weekend, we thought we'd take a trip up to Busted Head Lighthouse in Yurumbula, a town near another town called 1770. And I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to discuss the supernatural mysteries associated with it. And you have to listen because you're trapped. Guys, she is serious. This room does not open. No, joking aside, guys. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to hear some spooky supernatural stories. Nice alliteration. Well, thank you. Anyway, let's start. So, a bit of general knowledge. Captain Cook named it in 1770, which, as you might recall, is actually the name of the actual town close by. Hang on. The town's name is 1770? Like, 1770? Yep. The town marks the second place Captain Cook landed and the first in Queensland. Anyway, so in 1770, the year, not the place, Captain Cook shot and ate an Australian busted bird whilst exploring the east coast near the town, and thus Busted Heads was born. Ah. So when did Busted Lighthouse start operating? Was it built right away? No, it actually began its service 98 years later on the 26th of June, 1868. Oh, well, that's still pretty old. So, lighthouses are kind of ominous and scary seeming, right? Oh yeah, definitely wouldn't want to visit one by myself on a dark stormy night. They kind of ooze fear. Yeah, they sure do. Busted Head, in particular, has seen its fair share of tragedy. We have shipwrecks, four actually. Drownings, accidents, suicides, murder, and love triangles. So, not your regular happy place? Not at all. Sounds pretty haunted, though. Like, I don't believe in ghosts, but if there were ghosts, they would be there. Definitely. Anyway, I gave you and our audience a little list, but let's unpack it further. Good idea. So, what happened next? So, now let's talk about the shipwrecks. There were two that were completely lost. Completely lost? Never to be heard from again. Well, that's mysterious. The first was the Agnes, a two-masted schooner. It left Mackay on the 8th of June, 1873, bound for Brisbane. However, it was greeted by heavy weather. In order to weather out the storm, it anchored in busted heads, possibly around the 12th of June. I see what you did there. (laughs) Anyway, it didn't exactly go to plan. It was last seen leaving busted heads on the 16th of June, heading straight into a tremendous gale, never to be seen from again. Ominous. Kind of makes me never want to go on a boat again. Well, we still have two more shipwrecks to talk about. The other ship that's whereabouts still remains a mystery was called the Sarah Cooper. We don't know too much about this one other than, again, it was a two-masted schooner, 18 metres long and weighing 30 tonnes. It was built in Maribara, Queensland by W. Cooper and M. Byer in 1876. We don't know exactly where or when it sunk. It's presumed to be around the 3rd of February, 1876, somewhere between Gladstone and Busted Bay. But the wreckage was never found, right? So for all we know, everyone could be living happily and very much alive. Maybe they found the lost city of Atlantis. Way to keep positive. Thank you. Anyway, what's next? Next we have the Gibson family. The Gibson family? What happened to them? This poor family suffered great tragedy over a seven-year period. Man, what happened? So, Busted Head Lighthouse is really isolated. During the late 1880s to early 1890s, the nearest settlement was 15 kilometres away. That's pretty far if they had an emergency, or even if they just wanted to get supplies. Very true. At most lighthouses, they had a head lighthouse keeper and two assistant lighthouse keepers. Niels Gibson was an assistant lighthouse keeper. He was married to Kate, nee McGee, and they had four daughters in their early 20s to late teens, Annie, Mary, Catherine, also known as Kate, and Sarah Jane. So what happened? Their first tragedy occurred on the 5th of May, 1887. While Nils, the father, was away on a trip, Kate, the mother, left the lighthouse at around 9am, but had not returned. In the meantime, the daughters initiated a search for her, but to no avail. Nils came back to a missing wife and a missing razor. I don't like where this is going. 19-year-old Annie found her mother two days later, about half a mile or 800 metres from their cottage, 
lying in a pool of dried blood with an arm across her chest and a gaping neck wound. Oh my gosh, was the weapon found? The razor was found under a tree root at the site and was covered in blood. However, it was not considered suspicious. After a post-mortem was performed, a magisterial inquiry was held and the death was ruled a suicide. That's so sad. It is. But unfortunately, it was not the only devastation the Gibson family faced. Seriously? What happened now? Two years later, there was a boating accident. I'll start from the beginning. The busted head telegram equipment had stopped working in mid-May 1889. A line repairman named Alfred Powers had to make the journey to Busted Head Lighthouse from Miriam Vale to repair the equipment. Okay, continue. On the 15th of May 1889, a sailboat was returning to town from Busted Heads. On board was Niels Gibson, the assistant lighthouse keeper from before, his 20-year-old daughter Mary, the other assistant lighthouse keeper John Wilkinson, his wife Elizabeth Wilkinson, and finally Alfred Powers. About 450 metres from shore, the boat hit a squall and capsized. Niels and John both survived, however the other three passengers, Mary, Alfred and Elizabeth, met a watery fate. That was two years after the suicide of Kate, but you said there were seven years of tragedy, so I presume that's not the end of the story. No, it's not. On the 25th of February, 1896, Nils died at the lighthouse from cirrhosis of the liver. He is buried in the lighthouse cemetery near Kate. Okay, look, Melody, this place is definitely cursed, and I'm not even sure that I want to go anymore. I'm still not done. We still have one more shipwreck to discuss. Fabulous. Let's go. Out from Busted Heads, there are three lots of rocky outcrops. One lot is about 500 metres from the shore, the farthest is 5 kilometres, and the middle one is about 2.5 kilometres from shore. They are imaginatively called the Inner Rocks, Middle Rocks, and Outer Rocks. Well, that's easier. Well, yeah. A 40-foot or 12-metre fishing launch boat called Edith left Bundaberg at 5pm on the 4th of February 1948. They were faced with mountainous seas and a 30 mile per hour wind. Around 1am, Edith struck the outer rocks and founded and sunk very quickly. Wow, were there any survivors? Five. So what about the other crew? Interestingly, the ship and four remaining crew have never been found. The captain, Raymond Joel Rasmussen, as well as Alexander George Jealous, Vincent Allen Doff, and Harold O'Brien. And they were never found? No. So that's pretty amazing. Anyway, how did you even find out all of this information? There is so much information out there, it would blow your mind. The key is to understand that there are a few key places that hold official records about things that have happened in the past. These places are usually the National Library or the National Archives of Australia and various state libraries and archives. So here in Brisbane, it's the Queensland State Archives. The Queensland State Archives has original documents relating to the naturalisation of Nels Gibson, the inquest for Kate Gibson, the inquest for Mary Gibson, and Nels Gibson's will. Seriously? There is a paper trail for creepy lighthouses and the mysterious deaths that happen in them? Absolutely. There is a paper trail for just about everything. A quick search of the QSA database for lighthouses tells you they have stuff dating back to 1865, about when the lighthouses were being built drawings, photographs, and plans of them, not to mention how much it would cost to build, a register of the ships that sailed near them, records of those who worked at the various lighthouses, of all the things that those people ordered from the government departments, all from more than 150 years ago. So it's actually possible to investigate a place or something that happened more than 100 to 150 years ago? That's the really cool thing about using a place like the State Archives. The stuff that they have are records of what really happened. So people like Stuart Buchanan, for instance, who wrote a book about Busted Head Lighthouse, did lots of his research by following leads he picked up in the official records. You just never know until you start looking, and then you might just come up with some kind of story that makes a good podcast. Well, that's all the time we have now. This is Melody from Supernatural Secrets, an official Queensland Archives podcast. I'd like to say thank you to my cousin Anissa, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.